So, Android Studio, basic idea of this. It's very similar to Eclipse in that there's code editors, there's a project uh, manager, it's got kind of automatic code layouts as well, which actually is in Eclipse as well. If you look, you'll find uh, swing layouts. The way that you create it probably is a little bit weird if you've never done that before. So if I create a new project, it will ask for a company domain. That's required to make the project. It probably doesn't matter what you make of it though. The idea of a domain is that it would be kind of like, if you think of like google.com, uh, the domain is inverted for uh, the package name. So if I had this as my example company name, and then my package name would be basically this thing inverted. So do com.example. And this one, Galbraith JA. For package names, you want no spaces, you want no numbers, you want just letters, all lowercase. This is the project location. I'm going to use the phone and tablet. Uh, Android comes in lots of different flavors, almost literally, because they name them after various kinds of desserts. There is a minimum SDK, and probably 4.0 or something close to that is probably appropriate at this point. It used to be 2.33, but 4 was a pretty big change, so you probably want to start with that. I would start with a blank activity or an empty activity. Actually, probably an empty activity is better. A blank one, I think, gives you a menu. This is the name of the Java file it's going to create. It'll be named in a similar fashion to what you have in other Java projects. It's using camel case again, which is the each letter capitalized. And for classes, we use the first capital. For variables and methods, we end up using the first one lowercase. Activity underscore main is the name of the layout where the XML is going to be uh, put to put all of your code in. So finish. If you are working at home, you will need to download the Android SDK software development kit. It's big, just so you know. You can use the newer versions to basically compile into the older versions, so you might not need all of the older versions, but that will have to be downloaded at some point. I've downloaded it on all of the computers in this lab, and you can find it in the C drive under the uh, an Android folder. So this is the layout over here on the left. So in the Java section is where, here's the package name, it's basically a folder where your code goes into, and here's the main activity. So this is a main activity.java, just like any of the other Java files we've been doing. One of the things that you may notice is that in, in the imports, they're all Android imports instead of javax.swing. So there's Android versions of kind of everything you've used so far. There's an Android button. There's an Android view, which you can put text into. Android on click listeners, things like that. There's, here's this R file. So the R file is generated by Android Studio. You don't create R. You can go look at it if you want to, but you shouldn't change it. If for some reason it's saying that R is a problem, it's because of your XML file. So if I go down into this resources here and the layout, that's where my activity main XML is. So I'm going to go open that. You can, by default, render it to look like any of the various devices you want. So I could, in fact, lay this out like a Nexus 7 if I wanted to. If you'd look down here, underneath design, there's also a text. This is where you actually can type in the code, and that's where your layouts go. For those of you that uh, have done HTML before, you'll have a little bit of an advantage to this. So this is a relative layout, and inside of it, after a space, you put in various variables equal to whatever their value should be in quotes. So Android layout with equals, and then in quotes, what the value should be. Once you get done with this tag, you close it. So this is greater than sign here, closes this less than sign. Just like braces, you actually nest these tags. So here's a relative layout open tag, and then when you put the little slash before it, that means a close tag. 
So the relative layout opens here and it closes down here. Everything between that, from here to here, will be part of this relative layout. And so you can actually make lists and grids this way, where you actually create like tables of things. Uh, I cover that in the later videos. So this text view is the text that shows up here that says hello world. Notice that it's only a single tag, but it has this extra space and slash at the end. This is a shortcut to basically make an open and close tag all in one line. I could have also done slash text view if I wanted. That means exactly the same thing. So this is where your activity mains layout will be. This is referring to that. And later on, when I actually assign IDs into these, I'll make an ID for like a text view. I'll make IDs for buttons. I can refer to those by doing a find by ID on this R file here. And I cover that in videos later on as well. When you're actually launching this, you can create an emulator. So you are allowed to create basically pretend devices that run on the screen. You are welcome to do that. You're also welcome to actually plug in the Nexus 7 tablets and launch it from there. So if I run this, it'll actually compile. So I don't have, if I have the Nexus 7 attached, I'm going to need to make sure I turn it on. And then there's a little uh, code that'll pop up that I have to say OK to. And then it'll show up here attached. Otherwise, I need to create a virtual device. And you can actually set it up to be all sorts of different things. So I could set it up to be one of my tablets. So I could set it up to be a Nexus 7, for example. You can set up what the operating system is, all that stuff. You can give it all sorts of RAM. You can say whether it has a camera, so on. Now, a quick warning, running an emulator is slow. It'll take a while to launch, and that may slow down your debugging process. But you are certainly welcome to do it. Any questions on that? So that's Android Studio in a nutshell. The things that I show in the videos using Eclipse are the same ideas. You'll be dealing with XML files, attributes. You'll be dealing with Java files. They're just located in slightly different places, and the layout looks a little bit different. But all of the content of that will be the same. So there will be two projects, one of which will be Android Tic-Tac-Toe, so the same Tic-Tac-Toe program you've been using for so long. The only difference being that you'll have to make a computer player that plays against you. And then also it's in Android. And then the second one is a dice game called Farkle. If you've never played that before, you might look up how the rules work. Basically, you roll dice and try and get sets of three. Hopefully, that's enough that it'll get you through what you need to do.